see if they can't see you, it don't matter. You just go. Okay. Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae only on LA Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? It's Monique LeRae, and this is The Startup with Monique LeRae. And thank you for joining me on another beautiful Sunday here in California. And I have the pleasure of having someone on the show who is a mover and shaker in all industries. I mean, he really just spans from finance to cannabis to political platforms to uh, health and wealth. And um, it's e Dr. Lance. How are you, Dr. Lance? I'm great, Monique. How are you? You're looking nice. Nice hat. (laughs) Thank you. you. Yes, we're doing good. It's good to see you. You're part of the pandemic posse, so we'd like to check in with you being someone that in this time is really accelerating and moving a lot of businesses forward, a lot of conversations, and someone that's kind of a source for COVID technology and, and things of that nature. So we wanted to check in with you. Great, great. Well, Uh, Despite the pandemic, I want to tell people that the money has never left the planet and business (laughs) is still moving. Uh, It's not evaporated. There's opportunities out here in a wide variety of things, particularly technology and solutions, et cetera. So you want to inspire small businesses and let them know that there are opportunities out here. They don't have to give up. They just have to pivot, have to be creative, have to look at trends that are happening all across the country. Uh, One of the things that I'm seeing all across the country uh, are actually drive-ins. People are popping up uh, screens in parking lots. They're parking up screens in old drive-ins, churches. I'm seeing it all across the country. There's a couple of things. One, it creates revenue, but two, it gets people collectively to be in a safe environment, but still be outside. And we're seeing tons of trends across the country that are pivoting in reference to COVID-19. Yes, I love that you bring up the drive-ins. Right when this first came down, I think March, I tweeted or Facebook messaged out. I just said, I, I think drive-ins are going to make a comeback, or I wish I owned a drive-in. Right. I think they're going to make a comeback, and here they are. And what a beautiful time, even though it's like they, the saying is the best of times and the worst of times. But yes. what a beautiful time to find pleasure in other ways and uh, revamp some old industries. Yes, just again, I saw a special on CBS and they literally brought up the oldest drive in in the country uh, and they now have revitalized themselves to move it forward. So, uh, again, we're seeing venues out in parking lots, churches, all kinds of venues, and it's really exciting to see that old nostalgia uh, bring people out together. But there's other opportunities. Uh, particularly in uh, the temperature testing. I talked about this the last time I came on your show. Uh, They have um, temperature testing kiosks that are facial recognition because people want to feel comfortable when they go into an establishment. Uh, So as opposed to just having a person stick the temperature into your face individually, uh, they have kiosks that are aggregate all the testing for the employees every day. It tests every customer who comes into a store or a restaurant. So it gives people a safe feeling, especially as we're about to go into the fall and this year is going to be an increase in COVID. So we have tracked the top 20 uh, technology and opportunities in COVID that small businesses can be a part of and move this agenda forward. We want to inspire small businesses and let them know that there's hope out here. Even at the beginning of COVID, when the restaurants uh, were, were closing, uh, we saw some restaurants selling natural goods, sugar, salt, <laughs> paper, uh, making their own yeah. drink. So, you have to be creative in this space, but again, I think there's more opportunity than ever uh, based on, as you said, historical perspectives that when there are the worst times are the best times. We just have to aggregate the small business community and let them know there's opportunities out here. 
I love that. And, you know, I will actually be testing this uh, travel atmosphere. Well, we test it every two to three weeks with the pandemic documentary that I'm traveling on. And yeah. Hawaii specifically, we're going to put that you know, um, this week. And having those kiosks, I could see would really streamline travel, especially a, yes. a town or an area of the country or world that's looking to get their tourism back up. Having to go and test somewhere off site and bring the paperwork or upload it or, you know, streamlining that at the airport would really help. So it'd be interesting to see that. I agree. I agree. As I mentioned, uh, we have uh, targeted the top 20 opportunities. Uh, also, there are specific funding mechanisms. We know that the government has put together the PPP program, but there are also venture capital and equity firms that are specifically looking at people who can create products or can pivot in uh, the COVID-19 space. So there's opportunities out here. We just want to share with your audience, particularly the startup and the small yeah. business arena, that there are opportunities to, to partner and aggregate and be able to help and grow and also make money for their businesses. Let's pinpoint some of those things, Dr. Grant. Um, give us an example, if you will, of something that some kind of, um, you know, startup that are really on the top of that list that could get you know, some help and some boost if they were willing to pivot. Yeah, so you mentioned testing as uh, you've been going around the country. We have a gentleman by the name of Trevor Brooks who falls under our prison tech program. And our prison tech program are actual guys and girls who, uh, you know, went to prison, but they came out and, and created a second chance. And Trevor Brooks uh, created a platform who didn't know anything about technology in prison uh, called Gun Bail. And under Gun Bail, he was able to aggregate uh, platform that if you turned in an unregistered gun, you would get out of uh, jail for a nonviolent offense for $99. So that began the premise of his company and technology. Amazon found out about him and gave him engineers to help expand his platform. But here's the pivot. When they saw COVID happen, they changed the platform to testing. And so now uh, this ex-felon technology CEO is doing testing all across the country with 10 Amazon engineers in his back pocket. So we're looking at, again, charting those trends and that anybody can get into the space. You may be in the restaurant business today, but you could be in the tech business tomorrow. You don't have to own the technology. You have to aggregate and find those individuals who are doing it. So he is doing very well. Uh, the last I heard, he's in 10 states. Uh, doing testing for them uh, in his platform. And people, as you know, come up, drive in, do tests, et cetera, but they aggregate the, the testing, send it over to the labs and be able to be um, a, a very asset to the community. Uh, and so if someone who didn't have any background in technology and was able to create a mechanism like this, then we're very excited about that. We wanna, again, share with your audience, especially in the startup tech world, that there are many opportunities in the tech space for COVID-19 uh, for solutions to help the economy. I love it. Where can people reach you if they are, they're like, look, I'm sitting in my bunker here and I um, got a hundred bucks left to my name and I didn't get that, you know, that bell out, that loan, and I've got skills, I've got tech skills, or I've got an idea. Where can they reach you, are you doing um, mentorships? Are you taking on apprenticeships? Apprenticeships? <laughs> apprenticeships? <laughs> apprenticeships. <laughs> yes, I'm always looking for talent. Um, my direct email address is drfinance7 at aol.com. D R F I N A N C E, the number seven at aol.com. Again, I'm always looking for talent. I was just with five uh, young men who came to Los Angeles from Detroit. So there is a new trend there in the startup community. Instead of just coming to Los Angeles for entertainment, people are coming to Los Angeles for Silicon Beach and being able to do technology and, and move forward. So I have five mentees Silicon. who are doing awesome yeah. uh, in technology in Los Angeles area. Nice. Okay, so let's see. It's about the last quarter of year 2020 it didn't go the way we all expected we can safely say that all of our new year's resolutions uh didn't happen for the most part um and we're in the space where we need to change and add assets to our resume and add skills and what 
are you foreseeing going into 2021 that maybe we aren't in the workspace, um, in the hiring of outcomes, if you will, for lack of a better term? Where where should people place themselves? What few industries besides tech are you are you foreseeing for 2021? I'm seeing an enormous amount of opportunity in the economic and social justice realm. We're seeing because of all the protests uh, and all the police killings that major corporations are pledging 50, 100 billion, $300 billion in reference to social and economic justice. So if you have a small business, uh, you need to connect with a community or nonprofit. Don't create one, just partner with them and bring your skills to that nonprofit in order to assist in social and economic justice. That can be from diversity consultant, that can be again from technology and platforms, that can be from training. It's a wide variety of things that can help balance in the diversity marketplace. So again, I would suggest that your startup community connect with nonprofits and be able to bring their talents and skills to that nonprofit to address social and economic equity because diversity is profitable. It's not just the right thing to do. It's been proven that if you have a reflection of your customer base in males, female, race, et cetera, you will have more authenticity to be able to help sell a product to them. So again, I see this not going away for a while. We're seeing the NBA, NFL, everyone is talking about Black Lives Matter and how they're able to address social and economic injustice. The way to do that is take the small business, partner with the nonprofit, and bring your skills to that nonprofit. I love that. Um, what, you know, we oftentimes see the product of lots of hard work and, you know, you're coming forth with all these skills and, and all this experience, but we never really know how that happens. So could you tell my viewers and listeners a little bit about your background and like what went into the recipe of Dr. Lance? Like yes. how did you be this, this person that we see today? Great question. Thank you very much. I was very fortunate to begin research in uh, the mid nineties. And I said, you're going to pay me to read and write and give you my opinion. I went, oh, this is off the chain because I started in business before I went to research. So being able to do research and back my strategy and trends, I was able then to find the businesses. Uh, this started in the mid nineties. I was very fortunate to be appointed to President Clinton's <laughs> Economic Conversion Task did. Force. And so in doing that- ah, We got you back. Okay. Sorry, Dr. Lance, we got you back. We couldn't hear you <laughs> Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, my career in research started in the mid 90s, where they told me you're going to pay me to read and write and give you my opinion. So in doing that, I've always been able to do research and then look at the research opportunities in business development. And that started in technology. So in the mid 90s, I was very fortunate to be appointed to President Clinton's Economic Conversion Task Force that allowed me to go around the country look at military plants who were closing uh, and be able to come with opportunities for that. And so I saw how research combines with trends, combines with business, or be able to do that. So being very fortunate to be a part of that, I traveled all around the country and saw trends. And so I looked at, in the African-American culture, the church community. So I was able to look at how we can assist churches in economic development. I look in the sports community, how we're able to look at helping athletes move their agenda forward. Look in the technology arena and was able to move that forward. So I am 25% academic, 75% deal maker. And so being able to mm -hmm. research and look at trends, then find what businesses are part of that and then apply capital to it then I, I've been very fortunate. So I've done everything from TED Talks, lectured at Harvard, lectured at the White House. So I will always keep the 25% research, but also like doing deals. And so you take the research and you're able to, to move the agenda forward. I'm very fortunate now uh, coming back to LA to run my own investment fund, which will be able and focused on uh, black and minority businesses because that's the issue. It's not that we're not creative, we just lack equity capital. Uh, and so I'm very, very excited to be coming back to LA to do that. And we've been looking for opportunities and businesses to move the agenda forward. So I'm really literally in heaven in the city of angels. I love that. Yes, 
you look like you're really excited. I was following some of your posts. It looks like you hit up yes. some of your old spots that you. Yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm connecting with everybody. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> back. Speaking yeah. of food, I want to give a shout out to Michael Solberg Family Wines, one of our sponsors here, um, second generation, uh, female owned, and her father mm -hmm. started it in the 80s, and now Lisa Solberg. Her, she's a badass. Shout out to Oregon and Napa Valley and all of our partners. Still with her. So, awesome. Dr. yeah, we got to send you a bottle. I actually have to yeah. bring you a bottle. And I don't know what size you prefer, but <laughs> these amazing. are some of my uh, dummy bottles here. <laughs> okay. So, um, tell us what you think about the entertainment food and beverage space. As you know, Vegas has been hard hit. Uh, New York has been hard hit. I mean, I was sitting at a, a cafe outside having a, a wine and, and, tumbler, and I was the only person in the restaurant outside, of course. But, you know, it just seems like a ghost town. What do you predict? What does your anal um, analytics say uh, that life will get back to normal? How many months are you thinking? Or good question. Good question. I was literally out to dinner the other night with a colleague of mine who's been in the restaurant space for over 30 years at the national level of procurement. And he does an international conference in Dubai where he brings everyone together. First of all, we're gonna always eat, period. And people like going out to eat for the experience uh, and for the sharing. Uh, there are over 6 billion people in the world. Uh, they said food consumption is going to triple over the next 10 to 20 years. So the upswing of the restaurant business is always going to be there. In this COVID time, we have to be able to be creative. And one of the things that I've seen is the restaurants have hired their waiters and waitresses to be Uber drivers. So as opposed to doing DoorDash, they've created their own DoorDash by having their waitresses and waiters still on the clock, being able to deliver because people still want food. Uh, it's just a mechanism into delivering that. Uh, and so again, being creative to move the agenda forward. I think they're slowly coming back. We're seeing restaurants open, uh, not fully, but people want to go out, want to eat. But I say that, uh, again, selling products uh, as well as delivering is going to sustain the industry until uh, we're able to get back to normal. Uh, because people will always go out to eat. They love the experience. There's so many opportunities. The restaurant industry uh, represents 10% of the workforce across the country, producing billions every year. Uh, so it's not going to stop. It's not going anywhere. Just slowing down a little bit, but it have to be creative. As I said, being drivers, delivering, selling product, um, everything from, from raw goods to, to, to meals, et cetera, uh, and, and just being creative um, and, and, and doing that. So I, I believe it's, it's, it's only going to slow for a minute, but it's going to always be around. It's going to come back with the bang. I like that. And innovation, I think this is yes. something that you and I really strive in. I think we get geeked out and excited about a really good idea. I mean, it just, it's a shot in the arm for people like you and I, yes. you know, yes. and I think you're right. If we sat down and really thought about some ideas, we could get really creative. And um, I wanted to ask you, do you foresee uh, a new economy, excuse me, a new um, sector of insurance? around COVID-19. I know that in production, there's a level of, of, of liability that you know, they have to satisfy with COVID, but yeah. Is there a new level of insurance and uh, risk? That good question, good question. Uh, again, every time there's uh, problems in the economy, there's opportunity. So when you look at the whole insurance industry, it's not just to pay for problems, but it's also a financing vehicle. Uh, and, and so uh, there are specific policies now that are geared toward COVID-19 to uh, sustain businesses, but also a mechanism to borrow uh, from your policies to assist you in short-term periods. Uh, so I, I, again, I love that we have the insurance industry, particularly for COVID and those small businesses who either need uh, insurance uh, or can access capital is a great way to, to move this agenda forward. There are industries that are growing in the midst of COVID uh, and, and it's not going to stop, but uh, I think that's a very strong way for restaurants to make sure they're part of the insurance industry. I have a couple um, more areas to ask you because I know okay. that the, this is your 
this is where you live. This is your, you know, your, your area. Yes. And um, as far as, and I was reading something on Forbes, um, it was an article a few months ago about an exodus, a mass exodus out of the urban areas and city spaces. And if you look at New York, you know, I was just there a few weeks ago, um, there's a lot of vacancies. They said there's tens of thousands of, of, of uh, apartment vacancies because people are exiting the city. Do you forecast a real estate buy in not just suburban, but like we're spreading out now. We're going past Nevada. We're going past Utah, Wyoming and, and Nebraska. Like, what do you forecast for real estate? Where's a really good area to be buying? Awesome, awesome, awesome question. Uh, two particular areas. One, of course, is the commercial space. So as some of the companies are uh, closing up or slowing down and they're working from home, it's going to be great buys on office building office spaces. Uh, and that can be converted to co-working spaces, you know, for technology companies, particularly the market that you deal with, or just a hold and fold. So there's going to be quite a bit of commercial spaces available. It will become a buyer's market because people are staying at home for a moment and working. On the real estate side, on the potential residential side, again, opportunities because uh, people are, are getting behind based on uh, their income. Uh, it's able to grab homes that may go into foreclosure and then hold them and sell them right back to the people who are losing them, but also looking at uh, entire neighborhoods. I'm very excited uh, to, to let your audience know I've just become the economic advisor to the Muhammad Ali Children's Museum in Louisville. What? Yes. What? Yes. And That's part of huge. That, yes, I know. <laughs> Part of that sound is, effects on the show. <laughs> so, so my uh, business partners have bought the home that Muhammad Ali grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. We're going to buy homes all around the city. We're working with the city in order to buy these homes, rehab them, and allow people with minimum wage to own their own homes. Uh, so we're very excited wow. about the kind of project, and we'll be doing that in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. Well, that's a Knockout right there, pun intended. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> uh, that excites me. You know, I, I actually fell in love with this area. I went to um, New York, like I said, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I have a friend that lives up north in upstate New York. And she's like, come up and see Buffalo. I fell in love with Buffalo, New York. These mm -hmm. homes are so huge and so affordable. And I think that that's an interesting place to look as well. Have you been up to Buffalo? Yes, I have. I've, I've been in New York my entire career and New York and California, of course, are high in value, but because of COVID is allowing people uh, to purchase is not as high, not as low either, but there's some great deals out here in markets that were very high, uh, particularly New York and California. If you are a startup business or someone that is just sitting at home or maybe driving for Uber or Lyft and you've got um, a little bit of that, you know, PPP money or you've got a little bit of that um, economic stimulus, let's say you have about 3,000, 5,000 bucks that you're sitting on, what would you recommend that a startup person does that their business is completely in the event space and that's gone? Where should they put their ducats right now, Doctor? Well, there are a lot. Of resources out here. Uh, when I tell people, they need to look at their local business ecosystem. And what I mean about that is that there are free resources and free networks that you can tap into. One being your local chamber of commerce. They're funded public-private partnerships that look at trends for your local markets to be able to tap into that. The second is SCORE. Every city has a SCORE chapter, which is Society of Retired Executives who have tons of networks, tons of contacts, uh, and you're able to deal with them. Life is based on relationships. You can have a great idea, but if you don't have relationships, you're not going to get it going anywhere. So if you're a small business out there, small startup technology, whatever small uh, business you are, tap into your local ecosystem where networks can help you move your business forward. 
It's all about relationships. I tell people the key to being rich for every poor friend you got, get two rich friends, be able to expand your market and be able to connect. And people like sharing their information if you reach out to them, especially if you're a young person with an idea. Uh, and so establish your ecosystem locally, find out the chamber, the score, the SBA, all these are networks that you can get in for free and be able to network yeah. and share. Uh, your, your opportunities and your national networks. And again, if you are a minority firm right now, based on all the things that are happening, corporations are looking uh, for minority firms to help them reach out and, and solve or even address social and economic injustice. Beautiful. And it's, it's score.org in case you guys need to look them up. Score, S-C-O-R-E.org. Shout out to score.org because I remember getting my one of my first business plan templates off that website. <laughs> 10 years ago. They retire, tons of connections, and they want to help. They That's can awesome. They can the phone and call their friend in any corporation and cut you a contract. I mean, it, it, it's simple. There's so many resources, and people want to be relevant. And being relevant is establishing your ecosystem. Uh, also, the charity market. Every city has tons of charities. Well, who goes to charity events? Wealthy people who have connections. So you can tap into those charity events as a small business for free, volunteer, and meet people that will assist you in growing your business. Uh, you, you know, we don't have to be out here by ourselves. The whole objective shows that small businesses contribute to 80% of the job growth in this country. And so being able to tap into your local market, then once you get the local market together, you then move statewide, national, and international. On the international front, there are 400 World Trade Centers that are paid for by your tax dollars. I used to tell people it was FUBU, now it's FIBU, for all by us. Connect with these international World Trade Centers and sell your product across the world. You don't have to have a lot of money to make connections and resources. There are funding mechanisms that look at international. The International Mesmic Bank, which assists you in growing your company nationally. So I would afford to your audience to look at the local ecosystem and look at all the resources that are out here for small businesses to help them grow. I love that. That might be a chapter in your next book, The Local yeah. Ecosystem. That's it. <laughs> You're always flipping it. Gee. And you, we tell us about your book, Dr. Lance. So my book is called Wall Street to the Hood. Uh, it is a blueprint to rebuild this country. And I cover every sector of the economy, but I made it easy to read, not a stuffy economics book. So I cover finance, technology, sports and entertainment, nonprofit, international, tech, diversity. And I get to the last chapter, which is called the new economy. And in the new economy, it is understanding your value and leveraging your value to the marketplace. Many people don't know how to do that. And I do two examples in the new economy. The first one is the first stripper on strip club. So <laughs> own and leverage their assets and talent <laughs> to market. <marketplace>. Fun intended. <laughs> the second example is incentivizing to save. We found a credit union in the Detroit area. Now we know the poor man's lottery is the poor man's mechanism is a lottery. They go to the lottery all the time and they go to check cashing places, right? Well yeah. This credit union was so innovative that part of your savings goes to buy lottery tickets. So it's allowing wow. people to go in and save and then incentivize them based on where they are. It's always being creative from that perspective. So again, my book talks about how you look at the historical problem in a sector, you look at the present opportunities and then solutions. So anyone that uh, has any part of the economy can read my book and learn something about how you move the industry forward. Again, it's called Wall Street to the Hood. It is right. on Amazon, and it is a great platform and infrastructure to teach you historically what has happened in our economy, but the opportunities. Speaking of opportunities and speaking of relationships, what I mentioned earlier, I had an 82-year-old Jewish man come out of retirement. He said, I want you to come to my house every week so I can just pick your brain. I've never seen a brain like yours. He said two things that are very profound. One, he says, we're like your culture. We go and pray. We go to the temple. You all go to church. But here's something that you all don't do, and you need to in infiltrate it with your mechanism. And he said, my father had a mantra. And the mantra was, he never had a friend 
he didn't do business with. Can you imagine if we subconsciously and consciously start doing business with everyone that we know? Hmm. Then you're rolling. I mean, it's cool to have some wine, which I'm great. You had a wine there, but isn't it greater to have a wine and doing a deal? Or talk about yeah. the we do. Come on now, you, you, who are you talking to? <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> but we need to start looking yes. at how we take every relationship that we have and put yes. it to opportunity. Everybody that you know has a talent, but everybody's doing their own little thing. And that's all they'll have, a little thing. Unless you infiltrate and understand how you partner with everyone that you know. And if you do that, you'll able that's to expand your business. It's based on relationships. I've had major multi-million dollar yeah. contracts with no no contract. It was just a deal. I shook the man's hand and we did a deal and I invoiced his trust company every month. It's relationships. Well, now that is an old school, amazing way. I still encourage everybody to get a contract because that's the lawyer side of me to get a contract. Yes, but you you're kind of you're kind of pushing back on you're daring on this old adage of like don't do deals with friends, don't do deals with family, but you're pushing back on that and you're saying maximize yes. those relationships and win together. Yes. I'm sitting here right now in my best friends from high school home, right? We love each other, we hang out, but we do business. <laughs> it makes it fun, right? So everybody you know has some contact with something and that's how you do it. Run around here trying to figure it out. I'm a spiritual man. God gives you everything you need. Just assess what you got. Period. Yeah, and you, you're tapping into assets that you already have. You already you're building upon that relationship, and you're maximizing. And you're I always say add value wherever you can. Try to add value. So yeah, you might have a deal, but what else can you do for them to add value? That's it's right. like a love relationship. You're always That's wanting it. to add value. Send flowers, go to dinner, blah blah blah. Right. All so right. the term the term used to be economic development. Now the new term is economic gardening. How do you grow with your established network? How do you evaluate who you know and how you can turn that or grow that into business? And we have to do more of that. It's all about relationships, 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 period. Especially in the market. And you can get to anyone you want to. We used to say it was six degrees of separation. Now it's one degree of connection to anybody you want to meet in the world. I have three billionaires on my board. Why? Because I reached out to them via connection. Yeah, it's yeah. a great, a great way to think. And I think it also holds us more accountable because if it's people that we already love and know, and we care about their kids and we care about their home and we care about their overall well-being, you're going to do more ethical business. You're going to do your due diligence even more so to make sure that they win. So I, I like what you're saying, Dr. Lance. Let me pivot to my last question for you and want to shout out everybody that's watching today and working on a Sunday. Make it fun. Shout out to Michael Silver Family Wines. And uh, if you want to follow Dr. Lance, where can they follow you, Dr. Lance? They can follow me on Instagram, Lance.doctor. Lance.doctor on Instagram. Nice. Last thing, and we've got to cover, we've covered travel and health and entertainment. we got to cover love. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of these apps that we're on to find love in a busy world, Bumble and Match.com and all these other spaces, it seems that single people around the world kind of, we'll speak about America specifically, have kind of come to a halt. Um, do you foresee any new boom in the love uh business i know that Pornhub and only fans are booming god bless them but it looked like if you look at the patterns from the 1918 pandemic coming out of 1918 the roaring 20s happened alcohol started booming there was kind of a liberal moment for love what do you foresee in the love sector of business good 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 question i do a lecture on love economics Oh. And the reason I do that is because about oh, 10 years ago, I was speaking at a national government conference and they put me on a Saturday morning at nine o'clock on economics. Well, I had 10 people in the workshop. The, okay. very next, the very next workshop was male and female relationships, 700 people. So I said, how do I integrate economics <laughs> with love? And so... That's a very good question. 
we have to realize that we are somewhat attracted to what we see in ourselves. If it's art, if it's a car, if it's a home, and if it's a mate, we look to see what values or what reflections we have in ourselves, which means it is a partnership. So it has to be a business part of the relationship. Now, people are going, oh, that's me. I'm just being realistic. You will sustain relationships more when you have more in common. And so if you look at it as when you're doing a business deal, you're looking at the assets of the person and the qualities. The more you have in common will move the agenda forward. And I believe uh, maybe this can be something we can talk about in the future is entrepreneurial couples. How do you connect with relationships with people in the entrepreneurial world? Because it's different than a, a corporate person versus an entrepreneur person. But relationships are very important, particularly in life sustaining goals and in business. And if we're able to look at it from that perspective and not just be emotional, but look at how we can partner with another person who has similar values and we can build an empire, I think we'll have more impact from that perspective. And again, it is listing those things you like about yourself and then listing those things that can be reflective in another person and you will have a longer term relationship. And I know it sounds corny, but if you date your friend, you'll be able to have a longer relationship as opposed to uh, evaluate it just on romance. If it's your yeah. friend and you have a strategy and you want to build something, I think that you'll have longer relationships. And, you know, uh, it's been historical that people who stayed in their class, honestly, arranged marriages and things of that nature, they lasted longer because it was something more than just love, you know, especially a business person wants yeah. to be able to both. I'm just being honest. Well, that's, that's a good point. I mean, but there's a dialogue about what it is, even though it doesn't come just from the passions point with an arranged marriage. It's all right. The families have just it. And there's kind of a community endeavor, if you will, uh, between the families. But what do you think specifically? Those are all great points. Last thing, what do you think specifically is going to happen with the dating apps, like the bumbles of the world and the matches? And how will we date? during COVID. I think we're going to continue. Like I think yeah, I think we're going to continue to use technology. We're in a technology world. We're in a world where people uh, are want things immediate. Uh, we're on our phone more than anything. They're going to continue to grow. We're going to when you look at statistics, uh, six out of 10 marriages last year were out of the uh, dating apps. And almost eight of divorces were a result from Facebook. So we're entering, oh. into, <laughs> we're entering into a new oh. world of relationships. They're definitely connecting, but also divorcing because of it. They're using yeah. all those posts uh, that for evidence <laughs> to, to oh. look for. Um, it's it's uh. going to be continuing a growth sector in the day and that because we all want to make, we want to order our food, we want to order our car. We want to order our mate, so it's going to be continuous <laughs> out here in the dating sector. All right, Dr. Lance, thank you so much. If, if someone has a thousand bucks and they want to invest in the market and they are green, they are a novice at it, what, where should they put their money? Should it be the four horsemen of Microsoft, Facebook, uh, Amazon, and a missing one? But where, where would you direct? There's three, there's three types of investments that I always suggest to people. Uh, the first was the blue chip. I mean, you know, the, the Googles of the world, the Apples of the world, you want something safe, buy your little stock and just let it roll, hold on to it. it's not going anywhere. The second area, of course, is the area that I'm focusing on and, and part of is the cannabis industry. There are uh, stock exchanges in Canada. You can review that and find out what those companies are doing. Again, hold on to it and see how they grow. There's also small independent uh, cannabis companies are looking for investors and you can find that network too. And then lastly, uh, still the, the penny stock game. If you haven't been a major investor, or you want to get in, you don't have a lot to, to invest, you can learn and play the game with the penny stocks to give you an understanding of what's going on in the marketplace uh, and, and go from there. So those are the three areas that I suggest to people if they want to start investing with small amounts of money. Beautiful. You're the second person to say penny stocks to me in a month. So maybe I need to... Uh... Watch yeah. the boiler 
Boiler Room again. And, oh, uh, I love that movie. <laughs> I love that movie too. I love that well, movie. I love that movie. I love when he comes in for the interview and he says, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was he goes, I know $15,000 a year is going to not be a lot, and your family's going to be joking at you. F them, F them. <laughs> that was a great. You, yes, that was a great. Yeah, dude, like, he killed it. Shout out to Affleck and the Boiler Room. Yes. All yes. right, Dr. Lance, well, it's a pleasure to see you and hear from you and thank you for taking time and um, shout out to all the things you're doing. Um, you. What else do you want to leave us with? Any plugs, anything coming for next year that we should know? Uh, again, I think there's enormous opportunities now. People just have to be innovative, know how to pivot and, and, and come out of this COVID successfully in 2021, first quarter. I think things are going to turn around to our perspective. And again, if they want to contact me, Dr. Finance 7 at AOL, uh, always looking for great talent that can assist people in their objectives of business development. All right. This man never sleeps because I know, because I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Lance, and I'll Thank see you, you soon. All right. All right. Okay. All right, guys, that was Dr. E. Lance McCarthy, and he is a global economic analyst and, and Dr. Finance, and he's awesome. Um, I want to do a few plugs um, at the end of the show here. I want to give you guys an update on our pandemic project documentary. Uh, we're going to second to our last trip, which is uh, Honolulu and Anchorage, Alaska this coming week. And there's a lot of travel restrictions and things that are um, making it challenging, but we're looking to be there midweek and meet you people in those areas. If you have a COVID-19 story, if you are a survivor, an entrepreneur, an essential worker, um, you know, in that area, we really want to meet you and speak with you. We can do the interview at six to 12 feet with our drone. We can do it um, over the phone through Zoom. Uh, we can do that outside, um, but we're happy to meet you. So if you're in the Honolulu area next week or in the Anchorage, Anchorage Alaska area, or if you're in the LA area on this coming Tuesday, we would love to meet with you and speak with you and vet and see if your story is something we'd like to feature on our pandemic project documentary, which we're doing an extended trailer event this winter on the Roku channel with BUTV, Be A Better UTV and J Will Productions um, out of Ohio. So shout out to J Will and uh, shout out to my, my uh, just my team, everybody that's helped, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the hotels on the road that have helped us. We'll do a whole list and post on all of those brands, but all of our partners that have helped make this film possible. And uh, if you have a story, my email is cap Aquarius media. So C A P Aquarius media at gmail.com. You can DM me at cap Aquarius media on Instagram or on Monique Loray L O R E. Stinson, S-T-I-N-S-O-N, on Instagram. You can also email me. My personal email is M-O-N-I-Q at gmail.com if that's shorter for you. Um, we want to give a shout out to our, our listeners and viewers uh, over in St. Louis and all over the country. Shout out to Lady Ray J. Thank you so much for your continued love and support. And I want to plug my other business. We're going to start um, getting ready for the holidays and the new year. And this is a bigger bottle partnered with Michael Silver Family Wines, the wine caterers. We usually do events, charity events, celebrity events, and custom um, wine bottles. But right now, because of everything with COVID, we are online. So we're going to be launching a swag um, venture here soon. It's uh, called Wino Swag, and uh, it's a subsidiary of the wine caterers. So we won't be doing too many events um, right now, but we will do virtual. Uh, we've got a virtual wine tasting coming up uh, for Halloween here on, on the startup. And that's with Michael Solberg and a few other partners that we're working on as well as some other cool things coming up. Chef Corey will be joining us then. And we're doing a Thanksgiving feed event um, on Skid Row. So it won't be Thanksgiving morning, but it'll be on the 22nd, which is on a Sunday, which is when I have my show. Um, and we're gonna have Chef Mitch gourmet all day. Shout out to Chef Mitch. He's gonna be serving up hot meals to the homeless on Skid Row, November 22nd. And we'll be live there featuring um, some beautiful meals and um, some conversation with him on how he got into the chefing space and the cuisine space. 
um, and cooking for the homeless there. If you have any essential items, clothing or essential uh, that you want to donate, we're giving them a hot meal, but we're also giving them a package of love to take with them and um, wishing them well on this holiday season coming up. So if you are wanting to donate, or do anything like that, we are accepting uh, donations. So you can go on cap. For your help in advance. And I think that's about it. Guys. I think we, we've got our hands full. Just stay tuned. I'll be posting stuff on Instagram, the startup with Monique LeRae. And a shout out to Simone because we had a family emergency we're sending him lots of love and support to his family a brand and you're seeking celebrity um exposure uh, we have a gifting suite coming up in the spring for Oscars week it's the weekly up and you can reach me on that. So DM me, Instagram, email me uh, if you're interested. Um, red, you've got Chardonnay, 